Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can build a protective shield to separate the passenger compartment and where you're going to be sitting when you're driving your car for Uber or for Lyft. All right. So I took several photos of my first attempt and then I'm going to show you what I ultimately ended up with. I'm going to give you some idea of the cost involved to make this uh, protective shield. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get a measuring tape and maybe a notepad and a pen or something. And you're going to have to take some measurements. You need to know exactly how wide your car is from the, from the left part of the driver's seat all the way to the right side of the passenger front seat. You need to know how wide that is because that's going to dictate how wide the plexiglass is going to have to be that you buy. Okay. The next next measurement you're going to need to make is from like the roof of the car inside down to uh, maybe like the middle of the back of the seat or or as uh, you could probably go as far as you as the floor, but you're not going to find a piece of plexiglass that's going to be priced reasonably that you can afford uh, to do that. What I ultimately went up with or uh, chose was a section that was two feet by three feet. I found that that was the optimal size for this car that I'm driving now, which is a Nissan Rogue, okay? And um, so what you're gonna do, or let, let's, let's, I gotta slow down. What I did first, right? I bought a cheap panel of plastic that you would use for like um, uh, maybe a greenhouse, Okay. I thought, Hey, maybe I can make this work. And so I, I went to Home Depot and I found this piece of, uh, greenhouse plastic and, uh, it was over by where the gutters are, if that helps you at all and the siding. And, uh, so I bought a panel, I brought it home, I laid it out. I put the measurements that I just took inside my car and I transcribed those to the size of the plastic. Okay. I made some marks using a marker, and then I went ahead and cut it with um, a utility knife. Okay, so I had the, I had a, a normal rectangle shape, and I cut some ears off the top. Okay, with some angles off the very top, and I took that panel, I brought it back into my car, I put it up against the rear seats, and then I tried to get an idea of where do I need to put some holes so that I can drill for the cable ties that I bought that are going to go around the headrests? Okay. So that's what I did next with my marker in my hand. I held up the plastic with one hand and I just kind of made a mark where each one of those vertical bars are that hold up your headrest. I made a mark for in the center of each one. Okay. And then I went over to the other side and I kind of made the same marks. Now you're going to have to use your measuring tape and if you want to get a precise uh, location for each one of those drill holes, you're going to have to use some type of straight edge, uh, maybe like a drywall ruler, you know, something that's going to go way across, right? And then, because you want to make sure that the holes are the same for the driver's side headrest as the passenger side headrest. So measuring across, measuring down make sure that those are equal. Okay. And do that on the left side and on the right side. And that way they should line up pretty good after you've made your marks and you've got them where you believe that they look the best, not what you hastily did in the back to just make quick marks where the holes need to go. Bring the plastic back into your car, put it back up against the headrest and eyeball those holes or those, uh, those marks, the new marks and make sure that you're cool with where those, marks are okay so i had this piece of plastic i did i did that i ended up drilling the holes using a uh, step bit that i had and um, i went ahead and took a couple cable ties that i got i found at home depot they were in the um the uh, electrician section they're the real thick long ones um and i figured what the pack cost was like seven or eight bucks and um so i went ahead and and got uh, the cable ties and I, I pushed it through 
uh, the left side and the right side. Now I'm holding the plastic up in the back of my car up against the headrest, okay? And then all I did is I held it in place. I reached through around this pillar here and I went ahead and, and attached the zip so that they were, it went in, male went into female, and then I could start to pull the zip tie. I did that on both sides. I just got it loose, and then I went ahead and snugged up each side. And I'm like, all right, cool, this is gonna work for me. Now this is a cheap uh, alternative to an expensive shield that you would find on like eBay for 160 bucks or 200 bucks. If you get on there and look around, there's some folks that are selling those, and they're pretty costly, and I, I was gonna sp spend that. And I think all I had in this plastic was like 30 bucks, uh, maybe maybe even less than that. I forget how much it cost. This was my first attempt, okay? I'm telling you this so that you don't make this mistake, all right? That's the purpose of this, all right? So I, uh, I have the plastic in the car, and I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go test it out. I'm ready to go. So I, I turn my app on, and I go through the private, the uh, security check thing, you know, where they make sure that you're wearing your, your mask thing, you know, make sure that you're ready, you're ready to drive. So I put that on, and I'm, I'm down the road, and I get a, my first, uh, first ride with this plastic panel in, right? So I go pick up the guy, and uh, he gets in, he was an older guy, and um, he was okay, you know, we didn't have a problem. But the problem that I was experiencing was that as I was, you know, driving in pretty heavy traffic and I'm trying to trying to look around, trying to look back to see, you know, where the other cars are in this lane and maybe over on this side, I couldn't see through the damn plastic. Now, this is not a clear, it's clear, but it's got ribs in it, okay? And you're going to see that in these photos that I'm, I'm going to put in the video but I couldn't see because it kind of obstructed the view. So I got this guy and I got to get him to where he needs to be. And I'm scared, man. I'm worried that I'm going to end up hitting somebody because I can't see through this freaking panel, right? I made it to his destination, got, it out, got him out of the car. I could tell that he wasn't like going, oh, this was a great, great ride. Oh, fantastic, you know? I could tell he was kind of like nonplussed that he couldn't see through the damn plastic. If you're a passenger back there, you can't see through this material. It's, it's really difficult to do that. And that was the problem that I was experiencing, okay? So I'm just telling you this because if you think you can cut corners and get this other piece of panel, this, this clear panel, and make it work for you, don't do it. Just don't do it, all right? you're not going to like the results and you're going to end up spending another 40 bucks to get the right piece of plastic. All right. Now, let me tell you what I did after I pulled that down. Okay. I got home. I used my, uh, cutters, nippers, and I cut the, the cable ties and I pulled that piece of plastic out. And I was like, you know, I was dumb to even consider this. I don't know why I tried it. I should not I know better, you know, so I was beating myself up a little bit. I went, uh, I, I took it and I, I put that panel in the garage because I had to be able to see to get back on the road, right? So I go to Home Depot and I'm walking around and in the very back por part of the store, they had um, clear plexiglass. Now this stuff isn't really thick. It's like uh, maybe an eighth of an inch. But I thought, you know, that's probably all I need. You know, if somebody wants to break through it and, uh, you know, stab me or something or, or, try to get at me some way, they're going to be able to do it, but I need a couple seconds to respond, right? So if, if, uh, if somebody was getting violent in the back, I need to be able to get the hell out of the car and get away from them. You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, maybe trick them into getting out of the car and then I would haul ass in the car. There's a lot of scenarios that run through your mind if something goes bad. But anyway, um, so back to my story. I'm at Home Depot. I'm in the very back part of the store. I found the plexiglass. I remembered because I took my measurements. I needed two feet uh, of, yeah, two feet uh, vertically, and then at least three feet horizontally, lengthwise. All right. So I found a piece of plastic. It was like thirty bucks. I'm like, all right, cool. I already had the cable ties. I already had my step bit that I needed at home. So I got the plastic and I I brought it home. 
and it's got a protective sheeting on both sides of the plastic, okay, to keep it nice. And now with this plastic, you're going to have to score it. Remember how I told you when, when you're looking at it, it's like a rectangular piece of plastic, and you've got to cut some ears off of it so that when you put it up in your car against the headrest, it will sit close to the roof. You're not going to get it perfect. Don't try to get it perfect. Just try to get it so that it's decent. And um, so you're going to have to put some tape down on the plastic where you're going to make some scribe marks with the utility knife. And you're going to have to use a ruler. Hold the ruler up against uh, where you're making your, your mark for the ears. Okay, this is going to be on the top right and the top left. And so you're going to hold a ruler up against it, and you're going to have a, uh, a piece of tape on the plexiglass first, the ruler, your knife, and scribe, 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 okay? And make sure that you're going through the tape and you're actually penetrating into the plastic, okay? Because the next step is really important. The next step, you're going to take like a 2 by 4 or um, maybe a piece of plywood or something, and you're going to have to support both sides of that plastic right at that break point, okay? Because what you want to do, in order to get like a clean break right there, you're going to have to put something against both sides of that plastic and then either apply a lot of pressure, downward pressure, to break it, or you're going to have to use a, um, a tool to snap it, okay? Now, many years ago, I studied uh, stained glass, and so I still had some of my tools from when I was doing stained glass art. So I had this one pair of pliers that had like this really wide, it was like a four inch tong on it, and it, it was four inches on both sides. So I basically put that up against the plastic and just broke it, and it worked out perfect. I have a straight edge on one side. The other edge, I wasn't very fortunate, so it's not like it's perfect. It's kind of jaggedy, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm not, you know, I don't care, you know. I have it done. So now I've got the ears on the plastic, and I went ahead and did the same thing with measuring the location for the, the holes, and I uh, pressed it up against the headrest. I made sure that I got it up as far as I can because now I can go up higher because I got the ears cut off on it, okay? So I'm holding it up, pressing it up with one hand, a couple light marks with a marker, and um, I'm like, okay, this looks good. I do the same over the, on the other side. I take it back out of the car, I lay it on the ground, I take some uh, another long straight edge, like using a drywall uh, ruler, and I lined up the holes so that left to right, left to right, they're both in the right location, number inches down, number inches across, okay? You follow me? You don't have to make it so analytically perfect, but you want it to look decent and you want it to fit right. So spend a couple extra minutes, take the measurements, um, when it comes to drilling the holes, you want to start with a, like a really small drill bit, something to just kind of get into the hole, into the uh, the plexiglass, and don't go in real hard with it because you're going to end up shattering it. It's going to be a break. So you want to just nice and easy and slow drill your hole, get all the way through, and then pull it out, and then use like a step bit and slowly go in and widen that hole up. Okay. And you only need it wide enough for the cable tie to slip through there. You don't have to go real wide with it. Just enough for the cable tie to go through. Um, so once you have your holes in, come back out. Put the plastic back in your car. You're sitting in the pack and you're, you're pressing it up against the headrest. You just want to, you want the security of knowing, hey, look, I got it right. I got it right. Okay. So both sides are good. Now you go ahead and get your cable tie and do the same. But run it through and run it through. Now you could peel off the plastic uh, protective membrane first before you put the, the cable ties in. I think I did that. Uh, you probably don't want to wait to do that after you've got it mounted because you're not going to be able to pull it from behind the seat. So um, do that first, okay? Um, yeah, so then you're done, right? You got a protective barrier between the passenger compartment and the driver compartment, and that's good. Now you don't have to worry about somebody trying to reach over and stab you with a knife in the neck or stab you in the side or somebody coming over and give you a haymaker or something from the back seat. I'm telling you, if you you might be laughing. And I, I, I didn't really anticipate that I'd run into wild people, violent people. But I'll tell you, when you're driving late at night, 
Friday and Saturday nights, and you're dealing with some drunk people, don't underestimate them. Don't sit there and think, oh, this is going to be fine. It's just like I'm driving some 83-year-old Mary home. Don't, don't underestimate them because they could be a big problem for you and you could get seriously injured if things go to that level, okay? So, all right, so the plastic is in place. Um, the next step, I took it up a notch. I went to, um, to Walmart and I got some hooks, some 3M hooks. And uh, I think the packet that I had was, had like 20 hooks in it. And I had ordered some um, fairy tale lights that plug in with a USB port. They have a USB cable. And so I ordered those off of um, eBay. And I ordered the, gosh, I want to say it was like 10 foot, 30 foot. I don't know what it was. I'll put a marker. I'll put a image up on the screen so you'll know what size, right? That's important because I actually went around a couple times around the glass to make sure that it was the right, that it, I had, an, I had three passes around the plastic, okay? That gives me enough lights and it would look pretty at night, right? So that's what I did. And uh, you basically put the hooks there and the, the plastic is already in place. And I just reached under and did the self-adhesive backing, you know, 3M hooks and pressed them on this side, the driver's side. That's where these hooks are. And then um, you just run the little wire for the fairy lights around it. Now on the, on the hooks, you're going to have to have some hooks that are pointed up and some hooks pointed down. And so think in your mind of how you want to run your wires for the fairy tale lights around the plexiglass because you're not going to be able to have them all up. You know, when you get to the side like this, uh, you can't have it on the inside. You know what I'm thinking? You, you got to have it on the outside. And when you're doing your corners, they have to be uh, down like this. So you can come bring the fairy tale like down and around and up. Okay. And then loop. So I was basically doing um, one hook up, one hook down, one hook up, one hook down, all the way around it. You know, so that way I'm lacing the, um, the fairy tale lights. Now, once you get the lights in, and you plug it into your USB port in your car. Um, what you could do is if you have um, some, you know those little bread ties that you get when you buy a loaf of bread? They're usually colored like yellow or green or blue. You could, if you have a bunch of those, get some scissors and cut or um, strip off the, the blue and the, the yellow color uh, protective uh, sheathing on those and just get the bare wire. And then you can cut little sections that are about maybe, I don't know, about an inch, okay? So you get a bunch of those that are about an inch. Now what you do is you go around where the fairy tale lights are going like this, and in between where you got one, one hook up, one hook down, go ahead and lace that around those, those three passes of the fairy tale lights, and then twist it up, just like you were tying up your bread. And then that way, now you're gonna hold those three together and you do that all the way around in between where those hooks are, okay? That gives you an extra protection that the fairy tale lights aren't going to come undone. And you might have two streams going like this, and then the other stream is like hanging down, and it's going to look stupid. So that's what you need to do if you want to keep it uh, orderly uh, and looking good. So that's what I did, and uh, with, the, with the exception of the last thing that I just told you about the bread ties. I still need to do it, but it's up here and I haven't done it yet. So I'm telling you because I'm making the video now, right? So that's what you need to do. That'll give you an extra layer of protection between the passengers and you. You still have to be thinking about everything else as you're driving, you know, uh, being a good driver and watching other traffic cars and, you know, all the other anxieties that you get from being a rideshare driver. Um, but anyway, all right, so I'm rambling. I'm going to show you what it looks like, uh, the plexiglass with the lights. I'm also going to show you a sign that I bought off of eBay that says Uber, and it's got the same color blue LEDs, and it matches the fairy tale lights that I have, the same color blue, right? So it looks pretty good. So I got this blue sign in front that says Uber, 
And then I got the fairy, blue fairy tail lights in the back, and I hear nothing but positive comments from my my passengers. Everybody loves them. They think it's great, and um, that may help me from getting so many, you know, like number three stars. You know, if people are being petty, you know, they give you three stars or they give you one star. You know, because for one, what re, um, whatever reason, you know, they don't like the way you look. Maybe they don't like your long hair. Maybe they, you know, whatever. You know, not everybody's going to like you. You're not always going to be adored by people. So you try to do things that you think will increase the likelihood that you're going to get a five-star rating, right? I don't play any music when I'm driving on the road. I, um, I, I prefer to hear just the sound of the road. Uh, I think I told you in another video, God, I'm rambling again, sorry. In the, in the other video, when I was telling you about the two shootings, you know, if I had the music on and playing and I was, you know, just tooling down the road, I wouldn't have heard those gunshots. And if the car that was shooting was closer to me, uh, I wouldn't have heard it. And, you know, if my car got shot up or I got hit, it could have been a real problem. Um, not to make you paranoid, right? But I got the shield in. I'm actually trying to go up another notch. And this is going to frighten some of you, and it shouldn't frighten you. Um, but I'm actually looking at a bulletproof vest. It's um, There are moments when you're driving late at night in an urban area, inner city area, where you want that extra layer of protection, just in case. And I'm not talking about all your passengers are going to make you, you know, scared. I'm just saying that, you know, if something happens... And you drop off the guy or the gal and you're headed out of their community and somebody cuts you off and dudes jump out. You know, summertime's coming um, and there's going to be a lot more people out on the street late at night. And, you know, because the temperature's going to get warmer and you just don't know, you know, you just don't know. So I'm looking at some ballistic armor vest and in particular, I'm looking at something that will give me uh, a chest protection here, a panel. And panels on the left side, the right side, and also in the back. And if I can't afford that or find a good lightweight uh, option for a vest, what I might do is try to find something that um, I can put behind my seat, be, uh, excuse me, behind me in front of my seat, okay? Just in the off chance, um, I get that one out of, 10 million passengers who pulls a gun on me and shoots through the back of the seat. You know, you don't, you don't expect it, but you know, you don't know. You just, you just don't know what you're going to experience out there on the road. So I don't want to scare you. <laughs> Everybody that's been watching, I bet you if there's a thousand people watching this video, I bet you 998 are going to be saying, Oh, screw that, man. I'm not doing any ride share. I'm not going to get out there in that mess. Um, that might be the right choice for you. I don't know. I'm doing it because I have to do it until something else opens up for me. And then I can, you know, go back and get a normal job type of thing. But this is fine. You know, you're just trying to be careful. And again, I'm rambling. So forgive me. I'm going to end it now. Let me show you the uh, the sign in the front. Let me show you the back. Uh, the plexiglass lit up. And so you can get an idea of what you can expect and see if it's right for you. And if it's right for you, then do it. Make it happen. Good luck. I'll try to hit you up with another video soon. I got a couple stories coming, but I don't want to tell you about them now. I got to think them through because they're they're going to be a little bit different because the the people in them uh, were very odd characters, and I'm not sure if I want to tell these stories or how to do it so that it's it's uh, worthy of your time. Does that make sense? So anyway, um, take good care of yourself, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video, and um, we'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Here is the blue Uber sign that I picked up on eBay. Uh, on the left side, it's got a suction cup, and on the right side, it's got a suction cup. And I basically found a location right in the center of the dash, and I mounted it there. And then I went ahead and ran the, the wire into the cigarette lighter. So um, there's a little switch on the top of the cigarette lighter, and I press a button, it comes on, and I press a button, and it goes off. And so that's what I got, and it looks pretty good. Now if we go to the inside of the car, I'm going to show you how the lights look. 
and now as you can see it's pretty good all right and let me get in here Ugh. this is where I put the cable tie and if you see how I did it see you got the vertical bar here and then the vertical bar there I just tried to get it close and when you tighten up the zip ties it's going to shift the whole plastic so the whole plastic is going to move left and right so just try to get it so that it's it's looking good for you and um, these zip ties are I'm probably guessing about three-eighths of an inch uh, they're not quite half an inch so it's probably about three-eighths of an inch and remember I told you on the corner when I was making the corner I broke it here um, because I didn't really support both sides so it kind of screwed me up a little bit but it's fine you know it's fine I'm not gonna worry about it these are the hooks and like I said you've got to reverse them like I said if I had those little bread wires uh, little one inch pieces of wire I could put one like right around here and right around here and all the way down and around and then that would help pull these together and it would look more uniform so that's what I need to do next and I haven't done that but I will and um, but you can see it goes up pretty good I got it pretty close to the ceiling it's not perfect you know going across but um, again the measurements of this is two feet by four feet and uh, yeah I think it works out all right you know it looks really good at night and um, oh the other thing is about these hooks make sure you get the clear plastic ones so that way you know you don't have like clear plastic and then a white hook that would just look terrible so you want to try to make it look pretty decent and uh, anyway I hope that works for you I hope this video helps you I hope it keeps you safe and uh, if it works then great do it but like I said you know, you got to do something to keep the crazy people from getting at you, and this is the best way to do it.